Good afternoon, women of power. I am Sarita Wright, the social media manager here at Black Enterprise, and today we are launching our first weekly series called Work Your She Suite. And our guest today is the CEO and founder of the digital platform, Her Agenda, Miss Renisha Bing. Bing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, how are you doing today? I'm great. First of all, it's so nice outside. I'm happy to be at Black Enterprise. It's 2017. Like, okay. it's, it's really real, right? So, yes. you know, again, guys, Happy New Year. It's still January. We can absolutely say that. And if you don't know about Miss Renisha, you need to know that she is an award-winning journalist. She has an Emmy, and she was recently named one of Forbes 30 Under 30 for media. Her, her agenda platform includes videos, exclusive web content, uh, a calendar for amazing networking events, and she introduced a college ambassador program. So we're going to be talking to her today about how she built her brand, uh, who's in her uh, she suite, and a little bit about networking and mentorship. So, Renisha, could you just tell our Women of Power viewers a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. So as you said, I'm the founder and CEO of Her Agenda. It's a digital media platform. Our goal is to really bridge the gap between ambition and achievement for millennial women. And we do that using content and community. And so all of our stories tell you about how to set a goal, how to find a mentor, how to network, how to navigate where you are in your life and get to the next level, whatever that is. And so we like to inspire our readers through the stories of women who are in positions of power. And then we also like to give them the actual resources to make it happen. And so that database that you talked about of networking events and conferences is a big part of what we do. And then we have peer mentorship involved through our Slack community. So our readers are talking to each other, giving each other referrals, giving each other advice, and just really giving it back and paying it forward even before they even get there. And that's what I'm all about. Like my motto is no one ever slows her agenda. Wait a minute, say that again. What was the motto? No one ever slows her agenda. And so I started my career at 16 as a professional journalist. I was interviewing politicians, celebrities. I wasn't writing for any major publication. I was just writing for myself. And so that's the message that I really send with everything that I do is like, don't let anything stop you. Don't let people tell you that you're too young, that you don't have the right connections. Just put it out there and try. And the worst thing that can happen is people can tell you no. But then if that's the case, just ask somebody else. <laughs> that's true. Just ask somebody else. You're going to get that yes eventually. Yeah. Now, why uh, was it important for you to create a safe space for millennial women? Well, I always talk about what I know. And I know my peers. I know that we are super ambitious and we get very overwhelmed. And so we need a little direction and inspiration. And the moment I really started to think about it was when I was in high school. I modeled for Seventeen Magazine. They had this awesome program called Real Girl Models because they wanted girls to see themselves on the pages. So not just models that are perfect, but like girls that are everyday girls. And so they published my URL of a blog that I had at the time, and I started to get letters from girls across the country asking me so many career questions. And I realized at that point, like, wow, these young people look up to people they see in magazines, on TV so much, they don't have the right role models in front of them. And so I wanted to shift who my generation looked at as role models and really put a spotlight on these women who are in power because they are amazing. Their lives are just as glamorous as, you know, a Beyonce, mm -hmm. but you don't get to see it. And so I wanted to showcase that so that they could look up to them and not me, just this regular girl from Brooklyn that was just getting started. No, I think that's really awesome. And I, what I really love about your platform, in addition to the real world, the action steps, the things that people can do, is that you've also created a community where people can go and learn about events. And that's the, that's the biggest thing, is going to the next level, taking the next step. I've read everything I need to know about how to create a dynamic uh, resume, but now I need to go out and go to networking events, so I have someone to give their resume to. Mm -hmm. So can you give us a little information about how you approach networking and how you use networking to build the Her Agenda brand? Well, yeah, I always say you need to be in the room, but you can't be in the room if you don't know that it exists. And so that's why we have that database. And for me, conferences have been so pivotal because people go there with a purpose. And so when you go to a networking event or if you're in a not formalized networking setting, it's kind of hard to make that connection and really get people to pay attention and email you. But whenever I go to a conference, it's an instant connection. Like the person follows up the next day and we do business pretty much. Um, I've met so many of my mentors at conferences. So the National, National Association of Black Journalists has a conference that they do. 
and I met one of my mentors at that conference. She's a big celebrity publicist. Her name is Marvette Brito. Marvette Brito! Yes. <laughs> yes! I went up to her, um, and mind you, I was 17 at the time. And so I think I stood out because of that, because I was super serious. I had a business card at the time. Do you know what you said to her? Do you remember what you said? I thanked her for being on the panel. I said something specific that I really liked that she said and asked her if I could keep in touch. I said, I'm an up-and-coming journalist. I would love to keep in touch. I like to write stories about this, this, and that. So I was very specific about who I was, what I wanted, and how I wanted to engage with her. And then kept her updated regularly, and she ended up being one of the first panelists on the very first Her Agenda panel when I launched. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Okay, so we know Marvette Brito is in your She Suite. Yes. Who else is in your She Suite, and how strategic were you when you thought about creating this personal, well, I'm sorry, more professional board of directors? Yeah. So you should at least have five mentors in your personal board of directors. That's the perfect phrase for uh -huh. it. So one person always needs to be that one that always believes in you no matter what. They put the battery in your back when you feel down and, and doubtful and you feel like you can't do it. And so one of my first mentors did that for me when I was still maybe 15 or 16 and I just started doing the journalism thing and she used to work for Russell Simmons. And so she noticed that I was hustling and doing things on my own. She just she just saw me kind of out her peripheral. She went to my church and she said, you know what, I'm going to this party. You should come with me and brought me with her. And since then, she took me under her wing. She was one of my first, first mentors. Her name is Nicole Duncan Smith. And then my next mentor was actually the very first person I ever interned for. And so she's someone who really keeps it real with me about the journalism industry and the craft of journalism and lets me know when I'm messing up and really showed me the ropes in the beginning and pushed me out there even before I was ready. So you always need someone that's going to push you before you're ready just so that you can reach that level that you need to get to to perform at the level that you need to perform at. So her name is Rakia Mays. Rakia! Rakia <laughs> is a former editor here at Black Enterprise. She is an amazing, amazing journalist and new author. Yes. She has a book, uh, The Man, Man Curse. The Man Curse. Mm -hmm. So, oh, fabulous, fabulous. We love yes. Rakia. So she gave me my first, first chance and she was at the time working for a radio station, working at a magazine. So I always say mentors should be where you want to be in five, ten years so that they can show you the ropes and tell you the mistakes that they made so that you can learn those lessons. And then you also have to be, as a mentee, is a two-way street, right? So you have to be open to learning and being humble enough to open yourself up to learning those lessons and making mistakes. Um, and that's another mentor that you need to have, someone that you can be completely vulnerable with. But not your therapist. Not your therapist. Okay. But vulnerable <laughs> enough to tell them about when you messed up and when something is not going right or when... You, you maybe like drop the ball on something and how you can learn from that and, and bounce back from it in a way where you don't look bad in the long run. So everybody needs to have one of those type of people. And I would also say it's important to have a workplace mentor. When I worked in corporate, I made sure that I had a workplace kind of life coach in a way. And for me, I was lucky my HR person was that person for me. So she's the one who said, you need to make sure you say good morning to this person. You need to make sure you send an email to this person, ask them to lunch, but CC this person, mm -hmm. which is very key because, you know, corporate bureaucracy, mm -hmm. make sure you CC the right yeah. people so that you don't <laughs> step on people's toes. There's so many little rules that you don't learn, and my mentors have really, really been transparent and poured into me before I even did anything, before I even had her agenda. They just saw that potential in me, and that goes back to... You as a mentee, you have to put in the work, put yourself in the right room, mm -hmm. put yourself in the right places and spaces, but also do the work. Like, don't expect people to just hand you an opportunity. You have Absolutely. to earn it. You have to earn it. You have to earn it. And, you know, shameless self-promotion here. Um, as Renisha is out here talking about these conferences and events and the benefits, we have our upcoming Women of Power Summit, uh, March 9th to the 12th. It's going to be in the wonderful, beautiful, lovely Phoenix, Arizona. So we encourage you ladies to uh, register for that event. We have uh, Ursula Burns, former CEO of Xerox. We have Felicia Rashad. Hello, if you've been catching her on Empire, I know I have. I think she's fab. Um, we have uh, Elaine Wentworth from Teen Vogue coming. We have Bozema St. John from Beats coming. So this is a wonderful time to kickstart your years, kickstart your career, and follow all of these tips mm -hmm. uh, and information that Renisha is giving you, finding that mentor that's a champion, that one that will also push you, that one you can be fully transparent with, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you, is there a certain amount of number of conferences or networking events that you go to just to keep the brand top of mind, just to keep yourself fresh? I think I go to about three to four a year. Okay. Um, and, but in the beginning of my career, I went to way more than that. Any conference that was happening, I was there. And I would say now social media makes it so much easier to start to set up those connections before you even get in the room. Yeah. So if you're going to the Black Enterprise Women of Power Com um, Summit, make sure you look at the hashtag and engage with those speakers beforehand. And even up until you go to the panel that they're speaking on, and then when you introduce yourself, they're gonna remember you, like they're human, they're not robots. So they see the notifications mm -hmm. and they'll recognize the name, put a name to a face. And if it's an authentic, genuine connection and you're very specific about what you want and who you are, it will result in, in what you want. Oh gosh, it's, I, I love it. Now, I wanna switch gears just a little bit because I wanna talk about your college ambassador program. Mm -hmm. What it is, why you felt the need to do it, and what are your expectations of this program? I'm so excited about it because I started my journey very early in high school, but college also was a big, big moment for me, and I felt like looking at college students today, they don't take advantage of professional relationships early enough. They wait until they graduate, or they wait until that requirement of an internship. And so what this program really does is starts them to think, it starts them thinking about setting their professional network to up before they even get into the workplace, which is really, really key because I wouldn't have gotten any professional opportunities if I didn't already have that network that was like, okay, I know you're in college, but this is coming up. You need to do this. You need to make sure you're here. And so this program really lets them do that. You'll, you'll engage peer mentors on, on campus through this program, but also you're, you're gonna start to reach out to those potential mentors, those potential bosses, um, magazine editors that you admire and look up to because you'll have a purpose. They'll be doing live interviews with them on campus. They'll be contributing to the platform. And so it really just starts them thinking beyond their campus experience and into their professional world and what they want to do next. Oh, that's super exciting. Now, if anyone wants to get involved in that program, uh, tell them where they need to go. Well, the deadline is today. Ooh, so need to today's get on your it. lucky day, y'all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just go to HerAgenda.com and right under the homepage slider, you'll see it says Her Agenda Campus Ambassador Program. And pretty much I'm giving them all the resources that they need, like how to send that email mm -hmm. and get people to respond. Like especially if it's a cold email, there's a certain way to do it where people will respond to you and I you will really share all the sharing secrets. all the secrets. Yes. Okay, so you gotta take advantage of that. Now, uh, her agenda is a multimedia platform. You got videos, you've got content. Um, you got a crew following her. Renisha's got a crew today following her around day in the life, so it's really real. What are your plans? Where do you see her agenda in the next five years, the next ten years? So we plan to get into all aspects of media. Eventually, eventually have our own podcast network. Um, eventually, have our own TV show. And so the website is really just the first step. And so we're slowly evolving, um, really building our audience, and really, my biggest goal though is to connect millennial women with the right type of opportunities. And so this year we're looking to work with a few select corporations to use our content as a way to bring people into their job opportunities and help them to basically make their job opportunities a little bit more appealing to our demographic and maybe also, you know, appeal to someone who's not necessarily job hunting, mm -hmm. but you know millennials are always on the lookout for the next opportunity. So we want to work with them to find those passive candidates that they're looking for, or they claim to be looking mm -hmm. for because they say they want diverse, smart women, but we have them, so let's connect them to each other. That's what we're looking for. You know, I think it's really interesting because you yourself are an entrepreneur. You built this brand from the ground up. And I find that a lot of your content is geared for an entrepreneur, but I feel like it's also really geared for a person who's going to go into a corporate uh, position. Is that Was that intentional, or do you find that you get more people who have an entrepreneurial spirit? You know, what's, what's the audience makeup? I think a lot of our readers are in corporate or they work traditional jobs, but they're entrepreneurial. So they have a side hustle and they might dream of being a startup CEO one day. And so I also think too, a lot of the corporate mindset and skill sets that you use can be useful to you as an entrepreneur. And so for me, like just setting up a workflow, having some type of system in place to get work done is something that I learned from corporate. And I grew up in corporate. I, I was interning at NBC when I was 17 and literally grew up there every summer I was there. 
So I don't know anything but corporate. Whenever people shake my hand, they just like, they're like, oh, that's a good handshake. I'm like, oh, that's a little sexist one. But yeah, I can't help it. It can't just help comes it, right? natural. So yeah, I think that those skills that you get in corporate America can be applied across the board. And when you're an entrepreneur, though, the good thing about it is that you actually have more autonomy and more of the ability to act now versus you know having to wait for a bunch of people to chime in and whatnot. So. Oh, I love it. Well, listen, guys, I want to give you a heads up. If you have any questions, please go ahead and start putting those in so that we can um, answer those for you. And if you're just tuning in, we are here today with the CEO and founder of Her Agenda, Miss Renisha Bing. And I'm going to totally pivot right now, and I want you to give um, our Women of Power audience some career advice. So if I've been out of college for two or three years, mm -hmm. and I'm in that weird space where I'm like, I don't know what I want to do with my life, but I don't want to do this, this thing. Now, mm -hmm. that could be I've tried to start my own business, or I'm working at a corporate job that I'm not really feeling. What would you give them as some actionable steps that they could take to transition or get some sort of clarity? I would say the first thing is you need to be clear within yourself. And there's a lot of noise out there because of social media and you look at your friends and what they're doing and you see the highlight reels, but you don't really know what people are going through. You could see someone working at maybe what you think is your dream mm -hmm. company and it's a nightmare on the inside. Right. So I would say do a very strong self-assessment. What are you good at? What brings you joy? What are you? What do your friends come to you for the mm -hmm. most? And really write that out and get clear on, okay, these are my skills, this is what I like to do. What industry or what field would this be in? And then really start to think about that and then think, who do I know that's in that field already or who's doing something similar to this? And meet with them for lunch or coffee and just ask them about what it is that their job entails, what is it like in the day-to-day, -day, what type of people they work with, because that's a really big part of your workplace happiness, mm -hmm. the people, the systems, the way of doing things, like you could think you want to work in the music industry, but really the job that you think is your dream job, you're sitting behind a computer and on spreadsheets all day. So you really have to be smart about it and start to build those relationships before you make the jump. No, that's good. Build those relationships before you make the jump. Okay, so my, my final question. Oh, that's it? This is it. Oh, this no, is it. I don't want to leave you guys. Don't worry. We're going to have Renisha on for Instagram Takeover uh, during Women's History Month, so definitely follow us on Instagram. Be on the lookout for that. And her agenda is actually a social media partner of Black Enterprise, so we share a lot of their content each week. So not only should you be following her agenda, definitely follow us as well so that you can see that content. Um, uh, Renisha is providing amazing stuff on building your career, changing careers, uh, just upping your game at the job that you currently have, et cetera, et cetera. So it's wonderful, tangible advice um, and insights. So you definitely should be following her agenda all across the board. But my last question, you know, we have uh, Mount Rushmore, mm -hmm. but I thought maybe we could reimagine it as black business Mount Rushmore. So what for business luminaries, business titans, would you have on wow. your black business Mount Rushmore? Well, okay, so this is easy <laughs> and hard. Like four, mm -hmm. it's hard. But number one, of course, would be Oprah. Mother. <laughs> Mama O. My friends actually used to call me Baby O. See, this is how long I've been see, in See, what's announced destiny, so you know where you're headed. You know where you're going. <laughs> okay, you know where you're going. Okay, so the next person I would say is Melody Hobson. Love her. Love her. She's on several boards, she runs her own financial firm, and she's fierce, and, she's and fierce. it's just, it's amazing. Um, I would also add to that, ooh, this is tough, Ty Beauchamp. Ah, Ty hey Beauchamp Ty, yeah. Is also one of my early mentors, okay. and she's just incredible. She's a TV host, she has her own media platform, she's just doing everything, and she's just what I aspire to become, and I'm so glad that she's been my mentor for like 10 years. Wow. So, wow. Um, let's see, who else would be the fourth one? Da -da 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 -da. Drum roll. Um, I don't, I'm trying to think. Um, Does it have to be a woman? Does it have to be a woman? Okay, so I'm thinking women. No, it doesn't have to be a woman. I didn't say that. Okay. I said you're black business rushing more. Black. So we've got, we've got Oprah, we've got Ty Beauchamp, and we have Melanie Hobson. Mm hmm. All right. Wow, there's so I would say Pharrell. Pharrell, ooh, that's okay. Don't expect that, but I love how he laid a foundation in music, and then he didn't let them put him in a box. He used that as a stepping stone to do everything else that he wanted to do. 
And so I feel like a lot of people want to do everything straight up the gate, but like lay your foundation first. Like what is it that you're going to be known for, that you're going to build a reputation on, and then branch out and do the other things that you want to do. It's like a short-term and long-view thing. Like if Uber, when they first came out, had Uber Eats and all these other things, you'd be like, what is this? But they first started with being a cab company that uses to call cab to you. And it wasn't even a specific type of car. Then they evolved to a specific type of car. Then they said, oh, we'll deliver food. So like, I liked how he structured his career and how he's really in it for the longevity of it. Okay, so I love it. Um, so if you guys have your black business, Mount Rushmore, definitely let us know in the comments. Uh, you heard Renisha's black business, Mount Rushmore, that we absolutely love. She threw in a man, she threw in Pharrell, so that's super cool. And before we go, do you have any final words that you want to uh, give to our audience? And also let them know where they can find you personally. Yeah, so you can find me at Nisha's Agenda on Twitter and Instagram. Also at Her Agenda, of course. And my final piece of advice would be to feel the fear and do it anyway. I always, always say this because people think, like, I spoke at the White House. I do X, Y, Z. And they're like, oh, you must be able to do this in your sleep. You don't get nervous. I feel nervous all the time and anxious and just all the things that people feel mm -hmm. normally when they go through anything that's big or exciting, but you just have to push through and, and just do it, and you can do it. You're you are equipped. That's what my mentor tells me all the time. You, you are have it equipped. In you, just do it. Love it, love it. All right, guys. <laughs>